Hi, my name is Joan and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about how I was almost arrested for DUI. Yes, driving under the influence. I can, you know, I, I, can, I can laugh about it now, but when it first happened, it was not funny at all. It was about three or maybe four years into my journey, so I was still trying to figure out what the different symptoms were and exactly what was going on with my body. All I know is I woke up early that morning and I was feeling great. But by mid-morning, early afternoon, I developed a massive headache and was walking to the right instead of straight ahead or to the left. So I definitely knew something was happening, that my body was being invaded by the body snatches. <laughs> Instead of doing a sensible thing, which would uh, be to call my husband, let him know I was having some issues, so collect me, I decided to drive home slowly. <clears throat> Everything was going fine until I heard cow horns blowing and people were shouting at me. Why? Because I was driving in the middle of the road. I must say, my guiding angel was working over time. Next thing I know, I heard siren. The police were asking me to pull over and to step out of the vehicle. I was frightened because one, I was never pulled over by the police before and two, I now had a migraine headache. I opened the car door and stepped, no, sorry. I opened the car door and stumbled out of the vehicle. The officer took one look at me, swaying and holding on to the car door and labeled me a drunk driver. He looked inside the car, saw an empty bottle, of, an empty Coke bottle in the cup holder and asked me if I was drinking alcohol. I said, no, sir, sir. But he didn't believe me. I mean, yes, my speech was a little gobbled. And yes, I was swaying more than a tree during a cat to hurricane. But that was because the sun, which is my kryptonite, was shining directly on me. So I could barely stand. He glared at me as my legs buckled, causing me to really hug the car door. The fact that I might know I was definitely going to jail got real, real fast when he asked me to stand. Step away from the car door. Lord of mercy. Instead of stepping away from the car door, remember I told you all earlier, I was walking to the right instead of the left or straight ahead. Well, instead of stepping away from the car door, which would mean me stepping to the left, I stepped to the right. So the officer thought I was probably trying to get back in the car to, I don't know, drive away faster than a speeding snail or something. I mean, this is when the officer got aggressive. He aggressively tried to stop me from escaping. Like, really? I, I could barely stand. What was I going to do? Hop in the car, speed away, cut a movie, 
he speed after me, gun firing, blah, blah, blah. Take out my tires as I drunkenly swerve from side to side. And anyway, <laughs> let me get back to my story. Like I said, he aggressively tried to stop me from getting back in the vehicle. And it was at this point, I remember, I had a letter in my glove compartment from the doctor, just in case I was pulled over. No, not, not for DUI, but for having <laughs> such dark tints on my windows. Like I said, um, the sun is like my kryptonite. Um, if I'm, before I got my windows tinted, if I'm, when I'm driving and this, if I'm at a stoplight and the sun shining in on my hand, after a while my hand becomes weak. If it's shining through the window on my leg, my leg become very weak, which is dangerous. Because suppose I have to turn the wheel quickly. If my 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 hand, my arms, if they're weak, I can't do that. Same thing with, with my leg. If the sun is shining on my right leg and I hit have to hit the brake, you know, it, it was it was dangerous. So I got the windows tinted and they were tinted really, really dark, really, really dark. <clears throat> and I got a letter from my doctor stating that I had a medical condition. The sun um, worsened my symptoms and therefore my windows had to be tinted as dark as they were, and I kept it in my glove compartment. Okay, back to my story now. <laughs> back to my story. I looked at the officer and I said, I know you think I'm drunk, but I'm not. I'm sick. I have multiple, and my tongue got so tied up on sclerosis. I then had to say, I have, I have MS. Please, if you'd look in the, the glove compartment, I have a letter from my doctor, you know, and I was there at, standing, just swaying, and he looked at me so hard. And then afterwards, like, his face softened. I don't know if it was because it looked as if I was going to cry. And I was, because I'm like, something as simple as the sun. I live in the Bahamas, a Caribbean island, and sun, sun, and sea, all my life, playing in the sun, running up and down like my head ain't good, and stuff like that, and just to stand with the sun kissing me for a few minutes. Um, like Mr. Snowman in the summer, just melting away. You know, so I was on the verge of tears, yes. So he, um, his face, like I said, it, it looked as if he softened up a bit and he reached inside the um, glove compartment, like I asked him to, and got the letter. I asked him to, to, to read it. He looked back at me, and he helped me inside the car, read the letter, and said he'd be right back. And he went to his vehicle and called the station. He was there for a little while. 
And then he eventually came back and he said to me um, to give him the name of someone who would be able to pick me up from where we were and drive me to see my doctor because my doctor feels as if I'm in the middle of having a, a relapse. Yeah, he looked at me so sympathetically, you know, he, he stayed there until my ride arrived and he kept asking me if I was okay and I'm like, yes, I am. And when my ride arrived, he helped me to his vehicle and all of that. But I was happy because listen here, if that police officer had asked me to do the walk and turn test, child, I was not only going to be arrested for driving under the influence, but I was going to be arrested for sure for assault and battery. I was not falling down on the side of the road alone. I was taking Mr. Officer down with me. What? Mm-mm. Because when I started carrying on like the drunken master grabbing at invisible ladders, balancing on invisible walls, I mean just grabbing at anything and anyone beside me for balance, it was going to be over. <sighs> I just talking about grabbing at things and anybody beside me for balance. I just want to take this opportunity to apologize to all of those who shirt pocket. I almost ripped off. Um, whose nicely stained press shirt I badly crushed when they were headed to work on an event. So they were all crumbled. And um, last but not least, to the person whose ponytail I almost pulled off, in my defense, I thought it was yours. It looked so real. It really did. You know, and I'm sorry. It happened in a public place. <laughs> but <laughs> you should have secured it better. Really, I'm really sorry. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. <sighs> Laughter is surely one of the best medicines. It can really, it it really is good for the soul, you know. And <clears throat> sometimes I. Y'all probably look at me, see me always happy, smiling, and whatever. But in these past 23 years, I've had my fair share of, oh, what was me? And I've cried my fair share of rivers and whatnot. But I always still put a smile on my face. And... When I'm walking into walls and doors and falling, I just laugh at myself. You know, I laugh at myself. Because I know it's all a part of the, the journey we all have to go through, you know. So, smile. Smile. Laughter, like I said, is the best medicine. And it is really, really good for the soul. So I just want to thank you all for watching my video and if you haven't already, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Also hit that notification bell so you will be notified each time I post a video.
And to those of you who have subscribed already, I just want to say thank you. And until we meet again, bye.